Stay tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping in West Hollywood, and I'm with artist, educator, Tim Townsley, who was born and raised in Los Angeles, has a Bachelor of Arts in Art from Cal State Los Angeles, and a Master of Fine Arts from Otis College of Art and Design which is one of the schools I absolutely love. Yeah, but when I went there, it was the older school of... Uh, yes, yeah, it was and a different it was name. downtown. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. I yeah. know, I love it, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, um, I have to go on because uh, you, you taught at UCLA Extension, you taught at California Institute of the Arts, mm -hmm. Cal Arts, which is kind of far away from mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. but quite prestigious. And your work has been exhibited in galleries and your murals are epic. So tell us about them. I think they've been c in commercial stores, they've been everywhere. Yeah, that's pretty much. I did one when I was still teaching out of Cal Arts, and at the time it was the the largest mural, well in California anyway. The, what was it? It was at McLaren's Home for Abused Children. Oh. It was a facility for kids who, you know, were mistreated and what have you. In their background, and I got people. Let me see, Doc Ballard, my my office partner at Cal Arts, and uh, Michael Devine, who was a, a stage designer and an art director, and they helped me some. This is all volunteer stuff, except for me. I was the only one who was getting paid on it. And you stuff. were commissioned to do these. Yeah, and and they were they were huge sections of wall. And it ended up over a half mile. Of, of, Is that yeah. right? A yeah. half mile? Yeah. I did. Judy Baca did one yes. too. That in, was in very the, long, the, right? Yeah. Well, movie? she kept doing it, and I think she probably broke my record about. But but yours was at one time yes. the yeah. largest. It was I see. At, the, at the time I did it. It was yeah. And what was the subject? Well, it it, it was trying to be you know uplifting things that sort of thing. Um. You couldn't have anything. Whenever you did a male, it had to be a gentle male. I mean, you couldn't. Uh, a lot of them had come from such bad backgrounds that if right. you know certain athletes, I did a lot of athletes. And uh, McLaren it, Hall was really good. It was one of the first places that started handling abused uh, children, yeah, yeah. right? And we used to always raise funds for McLaren Hall. I remember yeah. it was a big charity. Yeah. You also did something at UC Riverside. I did for yes, I did a a. a, a uh, who was it? Uh, Henry Ford, the grandson or whatever he was at the time. He was the head of Ford and uh. for their board of directors and all that kind of I did a portrait of him, a great big giant portrait of him and some other people whom I don't remember now. There, it was all know. part of this mural? Yeah. yeah. It's so great because, um, and, and let's talk about one other one that I thought was really good was the jazz one at UCLA. Yeah, well, I they commissioned me to do when they would honor these great jazz artists, whom I'm a big jazz fan, so this was I a labor of love this. for me. I okay, yeah. I can uh, see your jazz yeah. fan. <laughs> and and uh, it's uh, it, it was it, it was a lot of fun. I had to do their honorees, and they, every year they do this big luncheon that you say, uh, the Friends of Jazz, uh -huh. and and to honor these guys, like you know. Uh, God, I'm trying to think. So it's all part. So who is this? Tony Bennett one year and and uh, Diana uh, Reeves. And, oh right, right. And anyway, so I did I did paintings of the of the honorees. Benny Carter, uh -huh. oh, yeah, who right. unfortunately died two days before the, the luncheon. He was oh, 95. Oh my gosh. Uh, but anyway. So you did paintings of the person, and yes, then you that did a part honored, of the mural, and then they were up for sale if people wanted to buy them. That kind and, of and who's this? I gave them to a lot of people. That's Sonny Stitt, a great alto player. His misfortune was that he played alto at the same time Charlie Parker played alto. Uh oh, so he wasn't, <laughs> he didn't get he known as much, right? He had a fantastic sound, right? but he wasn't Charlie Parker. And is this a painting? Yeah, it's a painting. And, yeah. and how large is it? 
it's pretty good size. It's in the three and a half by four and a half type size. Oh, know, it's and, like and oil on? It's oil and acrylic on canvas. Yeah. Well, I digressed with this because you were talking about jazz, and I know, and I wanted to, to bring the UCLA jazz thing in, because you actually taught mural at UCLA. Yeah. What kind of a class is that? Why do you teach mural? They d no one knew how to paint on a large scale for like, uh, what do they call it, California landscaping type thing. And then we changed it to, because I painted a lot of murals for Vegas in the hotels and stuff. Right, right? yeah. And, uh, I, and I would tell them, I'd say, if you're ever going to get any work, you, you're not going to get it by, by pay. You have, to, you have to go bid the job and do that kind of, did a lot of Disney Oh, murals. so was that part, yeah. of the te uh, part of the course, bidding the job, doing, what well, else would we, you Well, we went through the, the, that process because, you know, I, I had had a lot of experience in, in, in going when I get in the bidding meetings. And, uh, the, the, well, just as an example, like when I did Disney bids, I knew of the purchasing agent, the, one of the purchasing agents, and, and it wasn't my thing that I was bidding for, but <laughs> she always told me that, you know, you bid low, you bid high, they throw it out. It's, a, it's you got to be somewhere in between, and you got to be the best one of that and, group. And what are you actually doing? The cost of the materials, the time involved? Yeah, yeah, and you have to take out a big insurance thing in uh, case you fall off the ladder and splat on their property. You know, and also kind of you have to do all that, um, I guess, scaffolding, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But That's most all of the things I did were, I did the stuff for the Emporium on Main Street. I'd do a cell like out of Aladdin or, I don't know, those when they were first coming out with the, that new series of uh, uh -huh. digital stuff that uh -huh. they did. Oh, Main and Street I would and just Disney? They'd right. give me a one shot and I'd basically go five times larger than, you know, ah, that kind of I thing, see. whatever it was. And when you started, you didn't have computer t to, to blow things up, did you? Because no. a lot of them no, used no, I didn't, the computer. No, but, but computers is what got me out of the movie business because... All the oh, scenic backings, right. all the matte painting. Was it, matte painting used to be all hand painting. What is you know? matte painting? I know you did matte paintings for TV and for studios. Right. What is that called? Well, it's like, okay, a good example. I did something for, uh, I forget, a, uh, a, 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 what's his name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. A director, and they were doing a, the Chartres Cathedral, okay? Uh -huh. Well, I painted the cathedral on glass, about yay big, okay? But nothing behind it, just on a sheet of glass. And then they take it, the cinematographer, and they put it in the second fairway at, at Wilson in Griffith Park. And they, I somehow guess. it looks like, well, yeah, they shoot it so that in the background you're seeing, oh. and it, these monks are walking along, and it looks like it was the 14th century or something. Oh, you know? it's like a yeah. matte, that's what a matte painting that's what is? Matte paintings were so back so then, you yeah. just have this little thing, they yeah. shoot through it, well, and sometimes it looks they're like, big. or I mean, whatever. You know, depending, it could be big, but... But it's glass. Yeah, it's, it's clear. glass, and you have to be very precise, you know, and paint it. It's sort oh, of like a photo. very interesting. Yeah. And and is that the same as painting backgrounds? Backgrounds no? were the great big. I started in backgrounds because they uh, backing MGM was the best place in town at the time. MGM and Fox, and I started at MGM, and they're like 300 feet long by you know 85 feet high, and <laughs> most people do not know how to approach a painting like that. You know, it's like. They want you to paint a New York scene, you know, in and, July or something. And do you, you know. and do you paint it right at the studio? Oh yeah, you they had it? these big scene docks. They had these. This is the best part of the whole thing. <laughs> they had the, they had these frames that you, that went up and down through the floor, so you could always have it at eye level. You never had to get around, and crawl on your belly. Oh, you were like you were yeah. moving up. You're with just it? standing there with your oh, palette they behind would roll you it? working. And all you had to do is go move the frame up or down to be in the area you wanted to paint. But know? is that like street art? Is, is murals like street art, what they're doing now when you were teaching murals? Uh, that came along a little bit. Really, the kind of thing you see now wasn't happening much when, when I taught uh, that, those the courses mural. out there. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I saw this show that you did at, at Pepperdine. Yeah. And it was um, the, the, the Weissman Gallery yeah. had the Warhols. Yeah, I love the Warhol show. And, that was and you were in the library there. Yeah. But yours were all drawings of intellects. Yeah. Or were they yeah. intellects? Yep. Yeah. And tell us what that was. It, it's just I always had a love of philosophy. I, I majored in it in, in the undergraduate. <laughs> and I thought I would go on to, and then I just, you know, life came along and, and it didn't happen that way. But I always had a fascination with it. I've read tons of philosophy. And so I always admire these characters, and not so much for wisdom or anything like that. They have a great sense of humor, whether they know it or not, and uh, trying to answer things that are unanswerable, of course, and building these big silly systems 
to explain phenomena as we know it, which is absurd. And they were all drawings. Yeah, they're they're all drawings. They're all drawings. Pretty much all drawings. There were some that were. And um, the, you had a drawing of Warhol, I think. This is a painting. Yeah, that's a big, really pretty good size painting. Yeah, and that's Warhol. Yeah, and they, it's called Warhol sunglasses because down at the bottom there's Oop, a little. There, so there we yeah. got them. Yeah. Um, so how do you decide on your subject matter? Like what? Let's talk about this. That's on wood. That's on two. It's a diptych. It's on the, both pieces are. It's it's six high by eight across, and it's it's on a wood panel. And what does it mean? Uh, well, <laughs> um, it's the United States of America. Yeah. Uh, I, I you know in an abstract sense of, from the, from the map, and then it, that's uh, what I call an, an homage to our one true ethical value, which is greed. <laughs> greed. <laughs> and I love this because this doesn't look, this looks like a a blow-up elephant. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it, I let air out of it. Oh. And it, it, I won't say it's political, but... So know. it sat for you. Uh, it really sat, and then you painted it from life? <laughs> <laughs> I, I took a photo of it. Uh, yeah. So, and I have one other one that... Um, I mostly always work from photos, by the way. I love this one. Yeah. Well, that's Picasso, like mid-career, and then, and how know. big is it? It looks like yeah, it's, it's really big. big. It's big. He's roughly would be about life size. So that's you know, I can't remember the size. Maybe maybe seven across by four and a half, five feet. So when you that. you paint, so so far we had like a Warhol and a yeah, Picasso. Yeah. Do you set out to do a body of work that just encompasses, say, artists? I had just have themes that I keep That's coming back wonder, to. That's what I wonder, do you? And yeah, I, I, some of the artists that I really like, uh, at, at just one point or another, I'll just try and figure out some way to, to paint them. And this one? That's Karl Marx in Palm Springs. So, so this kind of goes back to that intellectual <laughs> yeah. group. Did you yeah. draw those are my clogs, by the way. Those are the ones I wear in the studio so, at the time. So, do you do you draw? Some of them are drawn, and some of them are. Well, these are paintings. Yeah, but this but is are a, they also? Doesn't... Have you drawn those those subjects too? Yes. You've yeah. done that. When you were teaching at Cal Arts, you were teaching drawing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, figure. Figure. Baldessari asked me to come out there and teach his students in the fine art, primarily in the fine art department, but some in, in uh, cartooning, which most uh. of them could draw a pretty damn good line, if you know what yeah. I mean. But they didn't necessarily know the figure that well. Uh. And he, so he asked me, he said, none of my kids can draw the figure. He saw some, one of my shows someplace, I don't know where. And, uh, but I always loved Baldessari, so I thought when he asked me, I was like, yeah, sure, I'd love Who to. Who else was out there? Oh uh, boy! At the uh, time, he was well, on the faculty. I know John was. Chris right? Burn. Oh, Chris Burn. Yeah, he was, was out too. there at the time. Yeah. Well, he taught out there. I think he might have yeah. also been connected with UCLA. I'm not sure, but he yeah. was out there. Right. And um, there were others. They were mostly conceptual artists, though. M mostly. Yeah. So that's why they didn't know how to paint the figure. <laughs> well, I, I won't in. say that. I, I know John could do it. I, I don't know some of the others. I, I won't mention. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. When you were teaching at Cal Arts, yeah. were you also working on your own work? Did you have a studio? Were you yeah. working? Yeah, I did. Outside of yeah, the I lived at, I lived in a little house uh, on, in Brentwood uh, for thirty-seven years. Oh wow! Uh, were you working there? I, we had the main. House. It was a small house. It was probably twelve hundred square feet or whatever. An yeah, old Spanish place from the twenties. And but Brentwood is Brentwood. I mean, everybody in the neighborhood has three million dollar houses and stuff. We're, <laughs> we're in this little place. He never upped the rent, and we stayed there thirty seven years. And you painted Jack Larson, <gasps> who was in, yeah, oh, he geez. was in. He was the uh, Jimmy Olsen in the, the uh, black and white. Yeah, in Superman. That was his house. He grew up there. <gasps> You're kidding. No. Jack was with his mother there then. Yes. Is that right? Yes. I love Jack yeah. Larson. He was one of our close friends, and we adored him. And then you lived in that family house? I lived in his house for 37 years, longer than he ever did, I'll tell you I that. bet. And he built an architectural house yeah, with well, Jim Bridges. Jim Bridges, they found it. Yeah, he, they got the Sturgis out of the, uh, what's his name, uh, the great architect. Uh, oh, I can't remember, but they yeah. had an architectural yeah. uh, icon, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, he lived above Sunset. He was literally a... We're below Sunset his, in, in his original house, and he's two miles straight up the hill. Uh, so he was sunset. close to where he grew up. Yeah. He never he, went around. The entire time we lived there, 
there were three Hockneys in the garage. <laughs> And he always asked me to take them down about every six or seven years and clean them up and do whatever I needed to do. And if I would do that favor for him. And oh. I said, of course I will. I love Hockney and stuff. You know, oh. so, so, but he, 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 they were just sitting in this funky old garage that was not hardly ever locked. Because you know, I'm sure David gave yeah. him the pieces. He gave him the pieces and they were too big to fit in his house, <laughs> the, the Frank Lloyd Wright house. Oh, it was, it was yeah, a Frank was Lloyd Frank Wright house. Oh. Tim, you brought us so much information today. Thank you so much oh, for you're being welcome. with us. You're welcome. And thank you for watching the show today. Keep writing to J A Q U I N N 1 at AOL.com. Bye.